Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture, the podcast. I am your co-host, Amira Smith, and I'm here with my awesome co-host as always, Joshua Meekins. Thank you, Amira. I'm so happy to have you back. Um, oh, I had yeah. told the people last time you were going to be chilling and hanging out. So. Oh, yeah. You told my business. <laughs> nah, I just said you was in this. It was, what did I say? It was, it was self-care. You know, you was taking self-care. It was. It was so That's all that matters. Um, as you guys know, we're starting off our show this time a little different than last time. We are doing announcements and updates just to keep, you know, our followers and our viewers and our audience involved with what's going on with us. Um, so first things first, if you do not remember, we are shortening our show. We used to do an hour-long segment. We are now doing only 30 minutes. Um, it's just a little bit easier for us to give you the content that you need. Um, we're going to be having more direct conversations, and it just you know, allows it to go up, flow a little bit better. Um, we're also releasing the episodes bi-weekly. So instead of doing every week, you know, it, it takes a lot to kind of get that weekly content out. We're going to do bi-weekly, take a little bit easier on us, but again, still give you guys the best content we can get. And then we're going to have exclusive content on our Patreon page. So you can see like live streams, behind the scenes uh, conversations, extra conversations that we have with our guests, a monthly newsletter and, and much more. So we're kind of going to be building that up as we continue to grow. Um, but all in all, Disruptors in the Culture is going to get bigger and better. You know, we're just going to continue to grow and, and, and be as best as possible. But today, we have another guest for you. Um, this guest, so I, I give him a, a lot of credit because he reached out to us, for real, and he really talked about, you know, he wanted to be on the podcast. We, we chatted a little bit before about how he found the podcast, but his mindset about, you know, what he wants to bring into 2022, his growth and how he wants to connect and, and, and build relationships is impressive. And, we, you know, we wanted to make sure we had a chance to talk about that. So um, without further ado, we have our guest, Joey DeVille. How you guys doing? Uh, first, uh, first and foremost, I appreciate you having me on the platform. Uh, it means a lot to be here today and speak to you guys. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate you reaching out and, and just you know saying, uh, talking you know, highly about the platform. You know, we, mm -hmm. we talked to you about how it even came about. So just to hear the stuff that you're doing and being involved in, you know, it, it really means that like you, we see you as a disruptor and somebody who's really trying to you know get things shaken up. Big facts. Yeah, yeah no doubt. So um. You know, who is Joey DeVille? Like, introduce yourself to the, the audience, the viewing and listening audience. You know, Joey DeVille is a complicated individual. There's so many layers to who I am, but um, at, at, at its simplest form, I feel like I'm a soul that represents a generation of us that feel lost, that feel misunderstood, that feel forgotten, broken, maybe even alone at times, and, 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 and we don't really have that voice to represent us in this culture. Uh, in a nutshell, that's what I do through the music, through the content, through the art, through the personal conversations behind the scenes I have with um, my supporters and my family um, all around the world. So that, that, you know, it's just so many layers. I'm very complicated. You ask 100 people who I am, you might get 100 answers. All right. So you said you wear a lot of hats. Multi hyphen it. Let's get some of them hyphens right like I like off. the Pharrell on your shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, right. no, that's like super law of attraction. Like I feel like I have two hit records with him at some point. Listen. I'm sorry, better, but go ahead. I'm will, sorry. You better will that in there. Absolutely. You never know. You know what I mean? You never Absolutely. know. So it could be like one of those moments where you be like, Wow. I no, for sure. It. Um what's what's the hyphens in your multi hyphens? Like rapper and what else would you like say? Oh, like the titles I give myself, I guess. Yeah. It's weird. It's because uh, I wear so many different hats and I don't like to like really confuse um, people that are watching me and tuning in. And it, like I'm really just here in entertainment and I'm just being great. Right now I rap. I rap really well. Mm -hmm. I rap a lot better than my peers and I found my niche. I'm not trying to be anything else that they're being. I'm, I, I really know what I want to do and I stick to that lane. Okay. Um I have so much music. I have stories to tell. I have a, I, I have a very traumatizing childhood. I, I dealt with depression at an early age, but I was able to overcome that. A lot of kids just never do. Yeah. A lot of kids go into their 30s, into their 40s, become grown adults, and still deal with those mental um, type of issues, with, with those emotional issues, with those real-life issues. And I feel like a lot of the music that I've already put out mm -hmm. um, literally – 30 minutes before coming into this interview, just dropped a song called Loner. I, I, you know what I mean? I haven't even promoted on my page yet, but like it's it's on the platforms. Like I'm feeding them music that's telling them my story so that so they can know, okay, I'm not the only one going through this. So that's really what I'm doing right now. In the grand scheme of things, you know, God willing, I have a long life on earth because I have so much more to show you guys. But right now, it's just music. Music, word. Mm -hmm. Do you um. 
so because I know you mentioned like you do some film work and everything. Mm-hmm. Was a lot of the other stuff that you do like what's the word? Was it born out of necessity to be able to just get your projects done? Exactly. Yeah. It was. It was that. It was. It was a point. Yo, you know, it's so crazy how perception plays a role in our lives. Like when I first started, I didn't. I didn't. I had. I was me. I had the same enthusiasm, same music. It was just in my notebook, same beat. I could have did it out loud for you. It was the same everything. Mm-hmm. Same schemes, marketing schemes, all of that. I had money up. I was working like McDonald's at the time, flipping burgers. Put money up. Like, yo, I pay for videos, pay for studio time. People didn't want to even give me a chance to get in the booth because of the way I looked. Looking back on it, I realized what it was. I had to get fly. I had to get get some sneakers that make sense. You know, it helps when you got a chain around your neck. It helps when you, you feel me, when you got seven, eight, nine people around you that look like that too. It's a whole different perception. I, I, I understood that later in life and, um, yeah, in the beginning, I had to do it all on my own. I was the engineer. I was the producer. I was the video guy. I was the marketer. I got on Google, learned how to do SEOs and oh, wow. ads. Yeah. I mean, I know this yeah. all. Yeah. I know every aspect of my business. So now I don't do I do not do almost none of it, but I hire the right people to do it, and I'm on the ass. Like, you're not, you, I'm not sending you a record and you telling me it's taking you more than four hours to mix. I'm not sending you. We're not shooting a music video, and you telling me it's going to get back in three weeks. Yeah. You're not doing that one. Yeah. Like it's, it's a weekend yeah, and I'm no, paying you a half a front and then you're going to get the back end when I get the video. I mean, you feel me like and yeah. it, it, it's this type of situation where everyone I work with, not just the video guys produce like because I learned it all graphic designing, like everything. So yeah. it's I don't know. I, I feel like I got the upper hand now. But back then, yeah, it was out of necessity. Like you say, the look is the hook. You like, yeah. And that's really what it is. People don't want to. It's like you got to be on for people mm. to like want to work with you That's or it. do stuff for you. And you yeah. be like, dang, well, if if I was on, I wouldn't need you. <laughs> like, what's up? Hey, but that and that's the fucking gem right there. If I was on, I wouldn't need you. I just had to get to a point where I stopped going to people just because I needed them. I was just started to be genuine and was like, listen, let's build, let's connect. Just started to do great shit in the city. And like anyone that gravitated towards me, I showed them love. Yeah. There's not a fucking artist in this city that ever asked me for for something that it, that they didn't get from me for free. I didn't try. I, I, I God be. I've done. I've done shit. I came out of pocket. Mm-hmm. Came. God is my witness. Came out of pocket and set up video productions that that cost a couple hundred dollars, close to a thousand dollars for artists, and got out the way and let them just be great. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like that's the type of person I am. It's not really given to me much, but. It's not what I'm looking for. I just don't feel entitled anymore. I, I did feel entitled at one point. So, yeah, I don't anymore. Where are you though. from? Um, I'm, I was born in Philly, but I don't really feel like I'm from here. I, I just moved around a lot as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really feel connected to anywhere. I feel like I'm an alien. Yeah, but where – okay, so you was born here. I was born in North was, Philly, yep. And then you went where next? At the age of 13, I was getting in trouble yeah. a lot. Uh, my mom moved me away. I went to Puerto Rico for a little bit. Okay. Got in trouble in Puerto Rico, and then uh, they sent me back to Philly. So you were in Philly till you were 13? I was, uh, yep, I was in Philly till I was 13. Bounced back and forth between Puerto Rico. Then they sent me down south. And that's where I went to high school. Like Atlanta down south or like Florida down south? I'm talking Tennessee and Texas. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm talking about down south. So you're Puerto Rican? Uh, yeah, Puerto Rican for it's sure. It's funny because it's like black people. That's what they do to their kids. We be like, you want to act up? Go yeah. down south. And nah, wherever, wherever the family is. So uh, I, I guess in PR, they like, It was look. everything. It was the greatest thing. I, I think yeah. I was the greatest thing that ever could have happened to me. Like, saved my life. Reconnect Why? you to your roots. And... Yeah, it just opened up my... It, it, it showed, When you step out of... Man, so many people that just never been out of Philly or the closest they've been out of Philly is like Jersey or something like, something like that. Yeah. Bro, when you see another world, go through the education system realize that a C over here is a 70, but over there a 70 is a D. Mm. The lowest C you get in is a 75, and that's frowned upon. Yeah. You get privileges in school taken away from you. There's like, over, oh, you know, in Philly, you, you get into a fist fight, they sending you home three days, you play in the PlayStation for three days. Over there, you get in a fist fight, you get in-school suspension, you do extra work. You're not going home. Like, it's all, it was a whole mentality shift. It was seeing everyone has a front lawn, everyone has a basketball court. Mm. And they're paying prices that people in the projects are paying back home. I knew the prices. Yeah. They're paying the same exact rent. Like, it, like seeing how everything is systemically set up, seeing, like, how life is just a lottery, how some of us were born here and others there. It's just, I don't know. It, it opened up my eyes. 
and uh, it helped me out. It helped me mellow out. Yeah. Okay. I'm not getting myself now that I'm back in Philly as an adult. I know how to not get myself killed. Yeah. And I'm okay. and I'm around like killers all the time, but like yeah. it's more because the nature of what I do is hip hop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So talk. I know you mentioned it for a little bit. You talked about the business. So like you know. You don't incriminate to... nobody. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Yo, forgive me. I'm around good, uh, genuine, wholesome people. I don't know what I just said. I was just I mean, kidding. I mean, but come on, we in Philly. Like no. we know what the we know what the rates <laughs> no. are. Look, you be you could walk down the street yeah. and you around some I'm killers. Sorry. So Did it's you know like what I mean? they don't mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. So you talk about the business a little bit. You said you know being a, a one man show. So not only is it the music, but there's a lot more that goes into just putting out a record. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. Like talk. Can you just just drop a little bit of gems and talk about like what that process yeah. looks like for you. Well, let me give credit where it's due. I'm not even a one man show anymore. And and okay. um, that's solid. You know, I'm a I'm a huge. You're gonna hear me. Talk about books like The Art of War, books like The Forty Eight Laws of Power. Yeah. I'm I'm huge on them on them okay. type of books. Yeah. But there's certain I'm not taking credit. I'm not having other people do the work and build my shit and take the credit for it. Like I'm I'm at a point now where I figured it out. So I got a few graphic designers that though this is my people. I got a few video people. These are my people. I got a few producers. These are my people. Um, and every time I put a project out, if you look into um, any descriptions on any platforms, they're always linked under those descriptions. Anyone that ever worked on a project is linked. Um, I encourage them to also link their shit in the video. So if you, you know, at the end of the video, there's credits and shit like that. Um, but yeah, not, nah, um, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, your process. So like when it comes oh, to. Oh yeah, it's a trust, long so process, man. But it's, 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 listen, I'm at a, I'm not, I'm not at the rich stage right now where I got the machine going and this is just a system that does itself. Yeah. I'm at a point where I'm really budgeting. I'm on a nine to five budget. I got to figure out after I paid my bills and figured out real life, what's going to go to what? Cause everyone want to eat. Yeah. Nobody on my team works for free and I wouldn't expect them to. Yeah. So it's a situation where it's like, all right, um, I got a record coming out. Like I, right now I got like 30 records in a can. So it's like, which one do you believe in the most? And then mm-hmm. also you got to let records breathe. Yeah. So it's like, I can't, I can't like as bad as I want to drop like an album right now, I'm not ready to drop an album. They don't want 20 songs at once from me. Yeah. Drake, Eminem and Cole just dropped their shit. It's too much in the ecosystem. So I got to play this strategically. So right now I'm just doing singles at a time. I'm getting artwork made. Um, I figured out a good system with that. If you're an artist, you need a game. Hit me up. I got some good artists for you. Um, you feel me? Put it up on DistroKid myself. Yeah. I register it. Get, you know, get everything um, on the legal side taken care of. Um, and then marketing has been a big thing. Right now I'm shooting some visuals. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, I figured it out. I'm a big fan of power. I'm a big fan of the way they shot. Like they shoot. Mm-hmm. They, they like the. Yeah. It's it's more than just a storyline. It's about the outfits. It's about the location. It's about um the angle. Oh my god! Like when you say power, you talking about the show or the the music video? The power. The uh the show. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, show. Yeah. So like imagine like someone's walking in the door and 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 you got a still shot coming out this way slowly and as they're making their way this way and we're about to transition into a whole other scene. Coming in this way, like so you're the, breaking it down. Like, oh my like god, that, that's how I'm that. shooting my music videos okay. moving forward. I haven't done that yet. The, I think the greatest video I did was No Love, which was like it's the numbers are showing, but um, my, I'm doing movies now. Like, that's yeah. my, my whole system is like movies because I have the story, I have the music, I just have to have the visual to match it. I think that's that's the that's the that's the path that music is taking now. Like, as we're seeing, like, we're seeing a lot more. Uh, artists become storytellers. You know, you have oh, yeah. Kanye just did the 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 Heaven and Hell music video. I think it was where it was just like the 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 many takes from the paintings and the different artwork that they did from oh. Paradiso. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but like it's just, they they started breaking it down. It's just like the artists, the especially like music artists, are now taking that and becoming you know turning their music videos into movies. Like we saw that. Very much with like Michael Jackson. Remember the uh, time. Yeah, I was about to say that we already been doing it. Yeah. Thriller. Hello. Yeah, no, I mean it's always been. I, mean, a thing. I think they're starting to like now take the. Mm-hmm. No, I'm saying, but you're seeing it like people are like, oh, that that's working, especially the way content's being consumed. Oh, yeah. It's now just being ramped up to ten. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, it's it's always yeah. been a like you say like the we say the men and the boys competition mm-hmm. with when it comes to mm-hmm. visuals because it's. I mean, we talk about the Busters, the Missies, Kendricks, like you know. And I think that's just, it's important, like you say, if you have a team, if you have your visuals guy, because it's very important to sometimes attach yourself to a director who mm. has a, a vision. You know what I mean? Whether it's like the Dave Myers or the uh, Hype Williams. You know what I mean? Like someone who you know they they got strong, or like Melina Mesukos, like who has a mm. very strong mm. way of trying to translate artist visuals. Um, do you have a do you have like a releasing schedule that you go through or is it more like inspiration of like when you decide to like It's a balance something? of both. So it's all right. 
I'm a like I'm a huge Gary V fan and Gary V talks about um knowing how to catch a wave. Mm. Knowing like and waves crash, so you're not gonna catch the wave three weeks later. The the, the trend when the trend happens today, mm-hmm. if you're not on the forty eight hours, get move on. You know, but if you wanna catch so I'm big on like you know, in the moment something happens, I thought about something uh something funny, you know, I might have said it online, we move on. And those moments keep my algorithm up because I know I'm about to drop a project that any I'm always dropping, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm about to drop something, so I like my algorithm up. But then there's other moments where, for sure, strategy. It's um, you know, I just I have I have two I had two records today that I wanted to drop today. It, one of them is called Smiley Face. It's a really happy record. It's really up tempo, up vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, I, f- I fucking love it. It's so good. I want to drop it right now. Yeah. But then the other song I had was Loner, and it's really sad, and it's really depressing, and it's really, um, really emotional, and it's just really gloomy. And I'm like, and I, that's such a good song too. And I want to drop it too. I'm like, which one of these two makes sense in the winter time when it's cold? And we're all quarantined. Mm. Hmm. You know? Yeah. So, like, you, you, there's a lot of strategy behind the way I drop, but there's also spontaneous. You got to be able to, like, see what's happening in the culture. And if you can't make the conversation about you, then become a part of what the conversation is, you know, about. Definitely. Because hmm. I've just heard a certain or Like, I, I saw a clip where Doja Cat was talking about she was releasing a song. I think it was, like, at least one a month or, like, every two weeks. But she was, like, she stuck to her schedule. And she's like, that's mm-hmm. I know I saw... I went for 500 followers on SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? Like, just like, mm-hmm. but make, sometimes it's the making yourself put it out there mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, trying to, I won't even just say trying to catch a wave, like not to go against the yeah. you, you, the metaphor you just yeah. made, but just, because I, I, I feel like Some artists aren't art, wave artists. You'll never yeah. catch the weekend yeah, catching a wave. I, and I feel like with art or anything, mm-hmm. sometimes you feel like you're just putting it out into a yeah. void. You know yeah. what I mean? And you're just like, does anybody care? But it's just like, you got to put it out there because you never know. Like, St. Mm-hmm. John Roses. It could be years later, and the song just blows, and you'd be Crazy. like, "Whoa!" You had your time. That's what that means. Yeah, but all because an artist in the Ukraine or somewhere decided to remix his song, mm. and then it was six years after that that song actually started going, that's crazy. and it changed his career. That's you know what crazy. I mean? So it's like shit. you'd be on welfare now, <laughs> <laughs> but they know you'd be on this welfare. Shit on TikTok, you'd be you like, got girls going like this on TikTok. To this shit. But, <laughs> but no, it, it, it made it go up. Cause he still got to, you know, he remixed his song. He still had to get that money. Yeah. But he said, you that's when you might be at McDonald's, like you said, flipping burgers. You take your apron off, like, it's my time. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like, I'm my song. Until so you song get a charter. lawyer and he tell you the publishing check don't hit for another two years. That's a real uh. jewel. F- figure that out, artist. Publishing ch- checks don't hit for about two years. So if, the, if, if I get a hit today, I got to wait about a year and like 10 months before I'm going to see a check for that hit. You know, I'm going to do live yeah. shows and features it's, and all exactly. that. but. You know, for the record, yeah, you're not getting paid for a minute. That's crazy. And That's everybody crazy. tapping that ass once that once that shit breaks down. So tell us real quick. So we, we talked about the music enough, not enough, but we could always talk more about the music. But like you had, you talked about the podcast too. That you had a podcast. Yeah. Tell, tell us about like, threw that. Threw that out the window for sure. You threw it out the window. Yeah, for sure. Really? Uh, Before I get to that, can I can I answer one more thing? Oh yeah, I, go I ahead. Backtrack. Go, go ahead, yeah. backtrack it. I also, when it comes to my content, content strategy and schedule, I just started to make. All right, because you know, you said Doja Cat. She was. I was doing that yeah. too. I heard Russ did a single every every week, so I started yeah. doing it. I did it for a year. Yeah, Russ's story is crazy. But yeah. what I realized was. It's not about how many punches you throw. It's about making every fucking punch count. I started mm-hmm. realizing don't just throw haymakers to throw a hard punch. Don't just jab to say you punching. Make sure you're hitting the opponent every fucking time, and that's doing some damage, and you're going to get a knockout. You know, right now, um, if you if you scroll down any one of my social media pages, you're going to see a consistency of content, and there's strategy. You'll see freestyle you'll see a comedy content you'll see some me on, on, a, on a podcast platform dropping some jewels you'll see um a song you'll see some visuals and then you'll see everything i just said repeat in the same order mm. nice over and over and you're over and over again but i'm punching though yeah. Yeah. i'm not like mm, i'm not just gonna spit two minutes of the fucking craziest bars yeah. anywhere i'm getting four of the homies in the city that's bubbling and if i'm gotta put chicken up behind the scenes y'all don't see that but if i gotta you feel me Two hundred dollars. Come on, slide out. Just stand with me. Let's let's rap. Yeah. People will come out. Motherfuckers is hungry. Yeah. So you feel me? It's a lot of that going, a lot of finessing. But yeah, I'm making every punch count and when it comes marketing. to the strategy. Like yeah. marketing costs. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of people. They don't. They want a bunch of favors, and it's like, yeah, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I and I'm seeing it where it's like they want a bunch of favors, but it's also like, and people 
they, what if they need money to even get to the favor, right? Like, it, transportation could be an issue because we don't know what be behind, especially new artists' lives. Mm-hmm. We don't know financially what they're going through. So that all counts, and it's smart. Um, yeah, so you're you're more, like, you like, I got to let it breathe. But that's smart because yeah. I, I also see a lot of content creators – they put out great stuff, and then you will never see that post again. Yeah. And I'm like, but if you gained 5,000 new followers, yeah. they're not, sometimes they they're not going all the way back. Bring yeah. it back. It's just a TV show. You got to put the reruns. You got to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. My bad. I took the question. I'm, nah, I'm you crazy good, like bro. that. Go ahead. No, that's, 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 that, that, that's, all, that's what you're here for, bro. We want to make sure you get a chance he to get He said 10 out. minutes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. We got now. This is just. Did I just break the third the wall? Episode. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, they know there are people back there. I hope they do. <laughs> so no, we got. Like we said before, you got these first 30 minutes. Go ahead yeah. in the episode. Talk about what you want to yeah. talk about. Then we got our, our 15 minutes mm-hmm. afterward. Mm-hmm. So you know, feel free. If there's anything else you want to make sure we get into this. I wanted that question you asked. I, I like talked about I the it. podcast. You said you throw it. Oh, the through. Oh my God. Because man. It's, <laughs> It's all per se. I just wish that life yeah. wasn't like this. It'd be all easy. Yeah. Yeah. But I really want a podcast. I like this. Yeah. I have so much to say. I have so much opinion. And we were talking about it before, too. Yeah, I want to do it. But 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 you know what happened to me? I've mm. been rapping, bro. I've been rapping since I was 13 years old, bro. Yeah. And like two, three days, uh, like, what, this Tuesday. So like two days, I'm about to be yeah. 27. Okay. I've been rapping Happy for... Happy birthday coming thank up. Thank you. Okay. But God willing, I'll make it. Let's yeah. make sure I got, wait, I got wait, two wait, days. Wait, when's your birthday? In about two days. Yeah. On Tuesday. Tuesday. 18th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm... um. I'm looking at this. I've been rapping for a long time, and, I, and I've been like doing it at a high level. Yeah. I get I, I get introduced to the show one time, and Shorty who brought me out was like, "And podcaster Joey Deville." He said, "Oh, oh no. no!" He said, hey, I, yeah. "I gotta scrap that joint." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to rap, and everybody's like, nah, "And then I'm all right." So this is the real. This is the real. So I'm your pot to, was doing all right then. It was not even viral. But it was like in the community that we was in, yeah. it was popping because oh, was I was on my Charlemagne shit. I'm asking like, like I'm like, I'm like, all right, wait, wait, wait. How many dicks did you suck that day though? Yeah. Oh, so it was just one. Oh, it was two in that week. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So why was it? Why was the one dick not enough? Like it's shit like yeah, that. Yeah, and, yeah, it's like, the and it's a bad shorty too. Yeah. And she, her homegirls is there and they hitting the blunt and they drinking. So they like, who the fuck is this motherfucker to be? So everybody wanted to be on. Yeah. But at first it just started off as us putting up cameras and just being us. Yeah. Just like really on some like real ghetto shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um I I was trying to leverage it as content for my music, yeah. like thinking like oh it would give a perception about me, like people mm-hmm. see my personality. Yeah. But what it turned into was artists thinking they're gonna come through the city and do promo with me mm. so now i got like homeboy who fucking was in my dms for six months not hawking me for yo when you gonna have me on when you gonna have me on yeah. i'm not a podcaster but i'm doing i'm working a on that as well on, i'm yeah. no i'm only a rapper yeah i yeah. just put up the camera when we're smoking and drinking yeah, yeah. that's what i didn't communicate you, you like, so they, just, they're calling yeah. me a yeah, podcaster yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm just talking shit on camera gotcha yeah. so now i got them on my platform i got people on my platform we're talking shit i'm like all right Top three reasons people cheat. Go. Woman in like woman is like, oh, he not paying attention, or the dick was whack, or he ain't got enough money. Some of the men is like, mm, the woman just walked in. You know, it's that type of conversation. Gotcha. I got a phone call after the podcast. Yo, bro, I just think that like it's just fucked up. I drove three hours from New York and you ain't asked me about my album. I wow, said, you that's like, crazy. Yeah, like you like this is not a promotional you, podcast. Yeah. I, am I said, rapper. sir, did you see my? Did you have you ever seen an episode of what I do? Yeah, yeah, I seen what you do. So then you know I don't give a fuck about your mixtape. I told him just like that. I might have burnt that bridge. I don't give a fuck about your mixtape. Nobody gives a fuck about your mixtape. Everybody's cousin raps. Everybody got a link in their bio. No one cares. Let's talk about something entertaining. Yeah, I want to know now that I have you in front of me. What are the top three reasons women cheat? I really want to know this. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I say women cheat because they're not getting, they don't feel like they're getting the attention that they right. need. Right. And it's consensus. usually, no, it is. It's just like. Attention whores. No. No. No, I'm kidding. I'm I kidding. think I everybody, I'm everybody needs I'm to be spicy. seen, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's effort. Yeah. For real, for real. If a woman feel like you're not paying enough attention, or it could be that, like, you're not giving me gifts, and you know I like gifts, so why, if. You know I like I, I used to say this to like the ex I had before. Mm. I used to be like, if you know I like gifts, why are you not giving me gifts? Yeah, that's your love. I language. know you like head. Well, how about I stop yeah, doing that? Right. You know what I mean? And it it turns into where you're like, it, forget a love language. It's like you just know what someone may like. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And you know what they don't like. If right. you know your your best friend hates the color red, yeah. you know what I mean? And you're like. 
oh, okay, let me, I got this shirt for you. And they're like, a red shirt, though? Yeah. Did you just meet me yesterday? So yeah. it's it's really that. It's just if no one, if you feel like somebody's not trying to please you overall, like just intellectually on all those levels, that's why I think sometimes why women cheat. And sometimes women cheat because they're scared because oh. men don't let them go. You know what I mean? Hold, hold this. Give me 15 hold, seconds. Or, or she tried, to break, ahead, no, or she tried to break up with him, and he won't hear it, and so she's trying to move on. Yeah, for sure. So hold this. Hold this, Joey. So two, I want to make sure we get two things out before we even get to the yeah. extended part of the episode. So <laughs> first and foremost, you know, we talked about everything about you, you know, your yeah. artistry, how you even came up, how you, how you kind of started your story. So with all that being said, what does it mean to you to be a disruptor? Yeah, that's the man. Thing. That's the main. We got. I, we got to. I love where the conversation is going, but we got to. We got to make sure we get this track. Yeah, no, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get yeah. this. To me, uh, being a disruptor is being yourself, because there's mm-hmm. only one you. When you when you when you conform to the norm of society, then you can't disrupt anything. You're flowing with the way. When you're yourself. That's what creates the world. That's why there's so many mm. colors and trees and, and species and all types of things on this planet. Being yourself is the greatest disruption you could be. Absolutely. Okay. And then please let everybody know where they can find anything that you do, whether it's your, your music, anything. Just let them yeah, know. Yeah, I'm, I'm anywhere and everywhere on the Looking internet. Looking to this camera? Yeah, right here. Yep. yep. I'm anywhere and everywhere on the internet. My name is Joey DeVille. I am a lost soul. I don't know how long I'm going to be here for, but I have content everywhere. YouTube, Mr. L, L, wherever you're at. I'm there. Um, if by now you don't want to follow me, I'll see you somewhere on some other piece of content because I'm out here. But if you follow me because um, you like me, I like you too. What's, D- what's your tags? DM me. Uh, just Joey DeVille. Uh, just type in Joey DeVille. I'm the only Joey DeVille. J-O-E-Y DeVille. D-E-V-I-L-L-E. Joey DeVille. All platforms. Um, to drive that point home, though, from earlier, <laughs> uh-huh. I was saying, though, that two-minute segment of her talking yeah. – would have did way more views than any question you asked me about my career because don't nobody give a fuck about me. Those type of conversations, you know how many men is eating that content up? Like, why, why, why? Because they trying to get jewels. They trying to figure out how to be better. Or they just want to be entertained. You know, like, it's so many layers to entertainment. So I started doing shit like that. And people started thinking I was like, they were coming to the breakfast club. And it just started getting annoying. People were like, wanting me to talk about things I didn't want to talk about. People wanted me to only do that. I drop a song. It'd be like, all right, that was cool, but like, when are you doing the episode? And mm-hmm. it's like, all right, well, fuck you guys. So now, just my thoughts doesn't exist anymore. I have the LLC. I'm going to always own the rights. But mm-hmm. if God blesses me to be like 40 years old, I get on my Howard Stern shit. I hang it up with uh, with the movies and with the music. And uh, I talk. I talk. My, I got a lot of okay. shit to say. <laughs> I got a lot of stories, crazy yeah. stories. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. But right now, they're not going to get them because they keep trying to put me in a box. And I got an album coming. Okay. Yeah. You want to talk about the album real quick? Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got under wraps for right now. <laughs> what um? All right. Who would you say other rappers who like everybody's inspired, right? Mm-hmm. Who would be like your top three inspirations <sighs> in the game? Like whether yeah. you know whether they still active or not. Yeah, Eminem, definitely the top inspiration. Uh, Drake, like doesn't follow. He is not even behind. He's right there with Eminem. Yeah. Um. <sighs> 50 Cent played a big hand in, in my mm. in my career. I'm happy to hear that. Like, I'm real happy to hear that. No, I like, you. yo, listen. Like, I was a couple weeks ago listening. I went on my title, put in 50 Cent, and I was just like, it, it, it sounds like I talk to my kid because everybody, they all know because 50 is still out here. He's, he goes viral and everything. The, the I'm like, y'all don't understand when 50 dropped. What it what y'all don't understand the feeling. Mm-hmm. And then when I was looking at his credits, I'm like, these guys weren't monster producers. You know what I mean? Even some of these producers, but Fifty had a consistent sound in the mm-hmm. beginning. He he was a monster. Like he's the shit to this day. So me, Yo, I, I, many I, men like. I had this conversation yesterday. Sound. I had this conversation like, yesterday. Mixtape Wayne or yeah. mixtape Fifty Cent. Nah, Wayne got that. Wayne got the mixtape. Think shit. so. Yeah, because he, he ushered in an era for us. So I, but, 50 had 50 I, was cold, the coldest. I probably listened to the 50 mixtape more because I actually like work out to this shit to this day. Okay. But the the like Wayne actually ushered in an era of like everybody. I know me as a rapper looked yeah. over and was like, oh, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. That it became a thing. No Changed one, no one was like, no one was doing that but until you, Weezy put it to the forefront around that but time. But do you think if 50 had the same internet engine that Wayne did? Would 50 have the same effect or no? 50 had a different 
game plan is, is I think it's apples and oranges. Mm. What 50 was trying to do and, and not trying to do what 50 did yeah. was bootleg the bootleggers. He said, mm. they just dropped me from the label because I'm too dangerous. I don't want my peers to know I'm blackballed because that's not good for business. I don't want the fans to know that I'm blackballed because that's not good for business. So I'm going to fake leak my own album to this bootlegger who's going to go run Queens and put out 100,000 copies of my shit. And then I'm going to go impress this motherfucker. And you're going to give me my money for my shit that you just sold. So that's my shit. And then we're going to run off. And I'm going to get the same bag I would have got with whatever label. That was 50s game. Wheezy was more so... We gotta, we gotta maintain, uh, get, we gotta just maintain hot. Like it was, it, Wheezy was bubbling. Um, it was when he stopped writing, it was like, I don't wanna write no more. So he had did the last tape where he had spit all his written bars and now it was just freestyling from this point. It was, you're seeing Wheezy, uh, bringing life to cash money through the albums, but still wanting to drop his personal. Like he was really being an artist. It was different. Yeah. Like, 50 did it out of necessity. Wheezy was just doing it out of, like, just being an artist. artist. And it's different. That's facts. That's mm-hmm. facts. All right, so we're going to have to wrap up at least this version of it. All right, this mm-hmm. version of it. I'm saying this is part of the episode. Mm-hmm. We're going to continue this conversation, you know, for for the next. See how long we can talk. You know, we're we talking, so we see what we have. But so everybody knows, thank you again for tuning in to another episode that's represent the culture. Joey, thank you so much, man. Uh, you uh, you are an amazing soul. Yeah. Um, the, what I've learned from you from this episode is complicated. Incredible. Complicated. I'm good right now, man. But you but you are you are you making it happen, bro. Yeah, man. Definitely, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on, both of you. Listen, man. It's it's and actually crazy. for booking me too. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's gonna be she crazy. Said. Like when, when people come on a show, like some people have this 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 like energy and confidence, and you you giving me young Kanye. Mm, because a lot of people didn't get it it's just like he like no you're gonna see you're gonna Mm -hmm. see i learned from him and when you look back Mm -hmm. at the archives Mm -hmm. so they're gonna be looking at your old pod like they ain't even know what they had they trying (laughs) to make a podcast you know what i mean they're not gonna get it they're gonna be like wow and it's just they'll be hungry for the the old content you know what i mean they like you try to make him just a podcaster Mm, shame on them they didn't know like i love kanye i'm I'm glad god blessed him absolutely all right so we're gonna wrap this up and if you want to hear more Be sure to tune into our Patreon for the rest of the conversation. Talk to y'all.